It's important to remember that any criminal charge of the former president out of the Manhattan grand jury investigation, if it happens, would be the culmination of a tale that began before the 2016 election and co-starred an adult film actress and a Playboy model, as well as the then head of the company that owned the National Enquirer. It is a tale very well known by my next guest. He is the author of Catch and Kill, Lies, Spies, and a Conspiracy to Protect Predators. We're joined now by author Ronan Farrow, who is also a contributing writer to The New Yorker. So Stormy Daniels, and this gets to a lot of your reporting, she had approached the National Enquirer with her story and tried to get them to buy it from her, but they turned her down more or less. Is it clear why they passed? So my reporting was on a string of interactions that Trump and people around him, including Michael Cohen, had with AMI, the parent company at the time of the, the National Enquirer, and proved out, I believe, pretty thoroughly that there was an ongoing arrangement to pay hush money to catch and kill is the, the journalistic term that was used uh, in the tabloid world. It's unflattering stories about Trump. So the catch and kill system, which you just brought up, orchestrated or involving David Pecker, who was the, the former publisher of AMI. H how did it work? The concept is very basic. The Inquirer forged an alliance with Donald Trump. David Pecker and his consigliere, uh, Dylan Howard, uh, were both heavily involved in this arrangement by which they would go out and seek unflattering and usually tawdry stories about Donald Trump, and they would pay money for the rights to those stories, uh, which entailed essentially muzzling the people in possession of those stories. Uh, and, and instead of running the results of that transaction in the Inquirer, they would sit on it. And I, at one point in my reporting, uh, got access to a master list of many, many stories that over the years the Inquirer had uh, done this with, with respect to, to Trump. So Anderson spoke with Karen McDougal back in 2018, the Playboy model who says she had an affair with Trump and was paid for her silence. I'm going to play part of that interview where she explains her experience with this catch and kill process. What's your understanding of what catch and kill is? Catch us, from what I'm learning, a catch and kill is somebody for, like, say, for yourself, for example, taking a story about somebody you like or care about or have a friendship about, and they squash a story so it doesn't hurt you. So don't hurt them. did you know that that's what was going, or, or that's the allegation of what was going on here. Did you, did you realize that at the time? I knew the story wasn't going to be printed. Yeah. Why do you think they squashed the story? Back then or now? No. Yeah. Um, they, they, they didn't want to hurt him. You think it's because of a personal relationship with the guy who runs AMI? is friends with Donald Trump. Correct. So to that point, Ronan, why was David Pecker protecting Trump like this? What, what did he, what did the Inquirer get out of it all? Well, there's now a lot of literature on this. You know, David Pecker appeared to really enjoy the friendship with Trump and the largesse Trump could afford. And I think David Pecker and, and Dylan Howard, you know, this is according to many, many dozens of hours of interviews with people who were in, in the rooms with them around these decisions, um, they all, all wanted to ride on Trump's political coattails as well. And then there was a dawning realization by Dylan Howard and others that what they were doing was going to look very bad. I mean, that was said in some of those internal text messages pretty directly, almost word for word. And and now we're seeing the consequences. So David Pecker did meet with prosecutors in this case that we're dealing with this week and reportedly testified to the grand jury. What kind of information do you think he might be able to provide? Well, what's interesting is when I was reporting on these hush payments through AMI, uh, including Karen McDougal's story, the, the Inquirer folks were lying to us. And they were giving us statements saying, this never happened, you have it all wrong. Uh, and subsequently, they have had to admit to what was alleged in that reporting uh, in some and substance in their agreement with federal prosecutors. Now, when these individuals are talking to additional prosecutors after that admission, I think there's going to be a lot more information. And what's remarkable about this, John, is it, it is uh, not new information. These facts are out there. Uh, you know, they were in my reporting. The Wall Street Journal did really potent reporting on this. 
Um, the, the record is kind of established and, and people like Pecker can speak to it and reinforce it. The question is, how is it going to resonate with a jury, especially with this novel legal theory that's at the foundation of the case? And how is it going to resonate politically? I, I you know, heard from a prosecutor uh, that, it, it, in their words, this is a, a billion dollar gift to Donald Trump, referring, in other words, to the amount that he'll be able to fundraise off the back of this. It has been a long road. We will see where it winds next. Ronan Farrow, great to see you. Thanks so much. Always great to see you.